You're watching the 737 Sim Guide on how to perform at your very best in the simulator time and time again. In this next video, we're going to have a look at engine malfunctions on takeoff. So stay tuned and keep watching. So just before we press the toga switches, when we're lined up on the runway, we just review in our mind or touch drills how we're gonna deal with the rejected takeoff if we need to perform one. And just the thought of what could occur uh, very briefly and what we would stop and go for, the high speed and the low speed. So now as we accelerate through the 80 knots, we are expecting to hear the 80 knots call. So as pilot flying, we will continue to scan the instruments as well as keeping the aircraft on the runway. So if we don't get a call, we're expecting an incapacitation and we might need to remind the pilot monitoring um, and vice versa. If the pilot monitoring calls 80 knots and doesn't hear reply, then a, sus a suspicion of uh, incapacitation. Other things the 80 knot call is for is between the high speed and the low speed regime. What are we actually going to reject the takeoff for? So passing 80 knots, we're now only stopping for fire engine failure, predictive wind shear or aircraft unsafe to fly. Also the 80 knots call is to confirm that the airspeed is rising, a cross check between the airspeeds. V1. Having passed V1, we're now taking our hands off the thrust lever. Uh, or in the case of the uh, captain for most cases, and now committing to the takeoff. Some companies might have a go call. Um, in this case, if uh, a malfunction occurs um, even up to V1 or even past V1, um, just to differentiate uh, the difference between I'm actually going now, I'm taking this aircraft into the air. This can be very useful because if you have a large split between V1 and rotate, it is very unnatural to be accelerating from V1 to rotate speed with an engine malfunction. Rotate. Passing V1, we hear a loud bang, a violent yaw, and we're aware of some kind of engine malfunction. We hear the call, rotate, and now we need to pitch up, and we need to pitch up to approximately 12 to 13 degrees pitch. At what rotation rate? Well, the normal rotation rate is two to three degrees, and the single engine is about half a degree less. So that's one and a half to two and a half degrees per second. Are you able to determine the difference by half a degree per second? Probably not. So it's about a feel thing. So it's just slightly less rotation than you would normally expect. However, what you do want to do is you do want to go for that 12 to 13 degrees pitch first of all. Why? If you have a heavy aircraft, an assumed temperature and a D-rate, when you lose one engine, the climb rate is probably not going to be that great. So you must go for the 12 to 13 degrees pitch 
get the positive rate call and then call for the gear. That way you're getting rid of the drag. What tends to happen on a normal takeoff is we will rotate, we'll go somewhere around 10 degrees, scan over to the airspeed indicator, see how we're doing, whether or not we've got a good trend, a good positive acceleration. If not, then we'll probably pause and then we'll wait until we do get an acceleration and then we'll start following the flight director. Now, if you start trying to follow the flight director a little bit too soon after rotation with single engine, with an engine failure on takeoff, then you might find that you don't get the climb rate that you're looking for. You don't get the positive rate call from the pilot monitoring. And there you are with all this drag. So go for your 12 to 13 degrees pitch, first of all. How much rudder do you use? Well, it's kind of like riding a bicycle. I could tell you squeeze and freeze. I can tell you just push a little bit, see if that's enough and push a little bit more. Um, but it's going to be all about feel. How much do you need as required? What about the rudder trim? Well, you can use the rudder trim if you've got a little bit of spare capacity, if you want to reduce the workload on your legs. This again, unless it's prescribed to you by your company, is a bit of a personal thing. You can either trim out all the forces or you can wait until you level off um, and then you can get the trim exactly where you need it. Or you can trim for about four and a half units. If you do this, then you'll be holding a little bit of rudder pressure. Then when you level off, the rudder should be more or less in the right place. So having got the pitch attitude to where you want it, having controlled the aircraft with the correct amount of rudder, you now need to make sure that you are flying straight ahead. The best way to help you do this is very simply from the nav display, putting the track line straight over the top of the extended center line. Once you've done this, you know what heading you're looking for and you can either ask for it or if your pilot monitoring is really switched on and keeping an eye on you nicely, he or she will just adjust the heading bug and put it in the right place for you. Now, all you have to do is fly the aircraft straight ahead until you reach 400 feet. you can say one of two things, engine fire or engine failure. Now, it's important to remember that a fire could be, well, when you see the fire warning, the, the red light in front of you from the master caution and you hear the bell, so the fire may not be an engine fire. It could also be APU fire, cargo fire, or wheel well fire. So at this point, yes, you can say that it's an engine fire if you see it, but you're not looking down, you're not trying to identify at this stage, not until we reach the 400 feet. So that takes care of the first part, controlling the aircraft on the runway up to 400 feet, how to deal with that part right up to the engine malfunction. For the next video, we're going to have a look at uh, engine malfunctions, the best way how to identify it 
and the emergency turn or the engine failure procedure. Thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed. Stay tuned, subscribe and like, and you'll get an update as soon as the next video is out on part two. So do follow me on Facebook as well and Instagram, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Remember, if a picture is worth a thousand words, how much is a video worth? Well, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed filming and sharing this information with you from videos and tutorials from inside the simulator. If you need any more support on license extensions or type ratings, license proficiency checks, or just preparation for that important simulator check or an evaluation, then email me at 737simguide at gmail.com. And if I can't help you, I'll find somebody who can.